you. Sorry about that. Um, so we are now at time. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So without further ado, um, I actually re real quick before we get started, uh, Miss Reina, um, you have an announcement to make, I believe. Buenas tardes. Las personas que necesiten interpretación en español o traducción necesitan apretar el botón que tiene como un globito mundial. Ahí ustedes pueden escoger español y podrán escuchar esta presentación en español. Toda la presentación será en inglés y al apretar ustedes el icono de español, me escucharán a mí nada más en español. Gracias. Buenas tardes. And that's it. Thank you very much. And so I'm going to now pass the mic over to our student hosts for the night, um, Anaya Zanad and Alexia Ely. Hi, my name is Anaya Zanad. I go to Juan Crespi, and I am one of the hosts. There is one other host, Alexia Ely. Hi, my name is Alex Ely. I'm a student at Juan Crespi, and today we're going to be talking about Juan Crespi name. Thank you very much uh, to the both of you, and, and thank you for um, volunteering to uh, take on this very um, uh, lofty um, center it. Of, uh, I already center it. Us through the evening. Um, just want to make a couple of announcements before I pass it back to the students and and um, and kind of fade to the background for for the majority of the evening. Um, tonight you're going to hear presentations uh, about our our school's namesake Juan Crespi. Students have spent the last two weeks uh, researching and learning about him, about um, what he is most notable for, about the California mission system. Um, the impact that it had on uh, the native people of this land and, and probably a good point uh, right now to remind us that we are um, Juan Crespi Middle School is on Ohlone land um, and the, the local um, the local groups of the Ohlone tribe are the Chocheno and the Carquin. Um, and that's the history behind the project. We, we started having these conversations over the course of the summer, as you all know, it has been a, a a very turbulent summer, but also a summer in which we, we had a lot of deep conversations around uh, equity, um, racial justice, social justice, um, and, and really reconsidering the, mis the, the, the mission and vision of our school and our district and how the things that we say and do um, and what we give credence to uh, articulates that mission and vision. So the students and the teachers have, have taken this project and run with it over the last couple of weeks and done some really amazing work. I thank everybody for being here tonight um, and please, um, please uh, support the students as they, they um, are presenting publicly, many of them for the first time. So we really appreciate it. Um, I want to take a moment to thank our history teachers. Uh, teachers, if you guys could um, turn your cameras on briefly, um, just so the community can see you guys. Uh, Ms. Barton, uh, Ms. Mann, and Ms. Schultz are all here with us right now and want to thank you very much. Um, not present, but also who has really, really put in um, a lot of work on this project is Miss Valencia as well. So thank you so much to our history teachers. A lot, a lot of work has gone on behind the scenes and we really appreciate it. Um, there will be a Q&A session at the end of all of the presentations. Um, so please, um, if you have questions for the students, um, you can put it in the Q&A um, or, or write them down and, and wait till the end and we will, um, students, uh, we'll be answering those questions uh, that come in through the chat. Um, again, thank you all so much for being here. Alexia and Anaya, you guys can take it from here. And I will see you all at the tail end, excuse me, at the end of our presentation. So Alexia and Anaya, go ahead and come back on. Okay, first we have eighth grade, eighth grader Anaya video. Anaya, do you want to introduce yourself before I play your video? Um, yeah. Uh, this is me, and I did a video.
Hello everybody, my name is Nayan Winnie Zanad. I go to Crespi Middle School and I'm going to be talking about how we need to change our school name. So let's get to it. Juan Crespi was not a great person. He is associated with the mission system, the mission for a lot of people, especially natives. There was a lot of abuse and he really didn't care about the kids unless he got what he wanted. What I mean by that is he wanted everybody to learn Christianity, which also meant denying native cultural practices. I think we should not keep our school name because Juan Gresby is not a great role model for us kids. One reason we should change our school name is that Juan Gresby built the foundation for the missions. In these missions, they took kids from their parents, and there was a lot of physical and cultural abuse. It was not great for a lot of native people, and they couldn't be. Children had to basically be a different person when they were in the missions. Unless you want us to be a different person in school, then we need to change our name. Another reason we should change our school name is Juan Crespi was a selfish man. He didn't care about the kids unless he got what he wanted, which was Christianity. This is telling me that you don't really care about us. Furthermore, please consider changing the name for our school. If you decide to change the name, I'll be happy to help finding a name. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Bye! Eighth grader web first letter West Contra Costa School Board, 1108 Bissell Ave, Richmond, California, Richmond, California, 94801. Dear West Contra Costa School Board, my name is Weber Dos Santos. I am an eighth grader at Juan Crespi Middle School. I would like to write to you because I would like to change the name of our school. After learning about Juan Crespi's life, I am convinced that there are better names for our school than the person I have been reading in my history class. The most important thing that I've read is the California population of Native American Indians. There were about 310,000 Native Americans, Indians before the Spanish arrived in 100,000 when they left. This is not consulting how can a single group of people cause the destruction of so many people. I learned that this was actually related to religion. Catholic missions were a result of the King of Spain demanding missions to be built in California. This was a problem because Native Americans were hired as contracts. These contracts were contracts to become enslaved as forced, forced laborers. They were forced they were forced into hard labor tending to the fields and raising cattle. This was a problem because the missions were profiting on all the work by making money on cow hides. The whole concept of missions is all wrong. There was also a transmission of disease like sexuality transmitted diseases which wiped out the Native American populations. This caused the Native American to just die. This is no different than 
what happened during the same time in the southern states of African Americans. The Spain lords just somehow covered it up a lot better and used religion. I'm disappointed by these acts that I've been reading. It's really sad to know that my school represents something that has contributed to the loss of so many lives. It is the loss of culture too. We could have more influence of Native American culture in California. I hope we can find a solution to the problem by changing the name of Crespi Middle School. Thank you. Our first seventh grader will be Celia Hom. Should our school name be Juan Crespi? Next slide. Our school name should be changed from Juan Crespi. Next slide. Statement of the problem. Our essential question is, should our school name be named Juan Crespi? My answer is, I think that we should change our school name because Juan Crespi was the man who basically discovered the CA missions, which was not the best experience for many people. Next slide. Background. One, Juan Crespi set up the route where the missions were built. Two, the missions were created to spread Christianity around the world. Three, the missions were formed new the missions form new communities for native people. Next slide. History.com history states, the California missions began in the late 18th century as an effort to convert Native Americans to capitalism and expand European territory. Next slide. Reason one, one reason we shouldn't keep our school name is because we don't want our school to be named after someone who treated native people as slaves. Native people were tending farms, livestock, and facilities for the missions. Native people had to stay at the missions until they were given permission to leave. Next slide. Reason two. Another reason we shouldn't keep our school name is because Juan Crespi had a key role in the missions, which didn't impact many people. The only people that the missions impacted were the Mexican people. Some people say the missions were a terrible experience for them. Next slide. Conclusion. Thank you for your support. After reading these slides, I ask that you, my reader, rethink, rethink about re naming our school a different name instead of Juan Crespi. Your support will have a positive impact because now our school community will think about renaming our middle school. Next, we will have Aaliyah Zinde, seventh grader, with her video. I'm sorry, I had to interrupt. It's an odd. Aaliyah, would you like to say anything else to introduce your video before I play it? No, thank you. I'm Aliyah Zanaj. I'm in seventh grade in Miss Mon's history class. I do think we should change our name, our school name. Do you know who Con Crespi is? Con Crespi is a person who cooperated with the missions. The mission is a horrible place for young kids like me. Kids were taken from their parents and brought to the missions. They were treated horribly, especially natives. They're physically and culturally abused. This is why I do not think we should keep our school name. Because Juan Crespi is not a good person. That Juan Crespi knew that the missions were treating kids bad. Therefore, Juan Crespi didn't care for the kids. If we're not changing the school name, you're telling me that you don't care for us kids. The last reason 
by which he changed his school name is he helped build foundations for the missions. The missions are bad because they broke families. They also made the news. I say we should change our school name. Please share this to your friends to get our school name changed. Thank you. Hi, I'm Aliyah Zanon. Next, we will have Brian Melendez, eighth grader, reading his letter. Hi, my name is Brian, and I'm in eighth grade, and this is my letter. Juan Crespi's name needs to be saved. Juan Crespi was a Franciscan priest who records the California expedition led by Portola in 1769. He also worked with Father Unipero Serra in building a California mission. Our school has been named Juan Crespi over 50 years. Some people think that we should rename the school. I think we should keep the name. Here are some reasons that our school should be should be keep calling Juan Crespi Middle School. Juan Crespi was asked to come to California with Spanish explorers and priests. He was an important person because he wrote kept records about the native people, Americans, like their language and way of life. The priest Crespi was Students, parents, and grandparents went there. These people think good things at school when they hear the name Crespi. Not about the missions and explorers. This is why I think we should keep the name Juan Crespi. Yours truly, Brian Melendez, Juan. All right, so halfway through our night, almost. Um, thank you everyone for your fantastic attention. Thank you so much to our student presenters and sharers and hosts at this point. I know I have learned a lot, hopefully you have as well. Um, we're excited to do a quick raffle with two lucky winners for a Juan Crespi t-shirt. Um, so I'm going to randomly pull some names and I will let you know in the chat who our lucky winners are. If you are one of our lucky winners, um, I'll follow up with you at the end of the night to get your address so that you can receive your fantastic Juan Crespi t-shirt. Um, while I, so check the chat in the next like five minutes or so to see if you are one of our lucky winners.
Next, we will have Emmanuel Hera, seventh grader. He is not able to attend today, so I will be reading his slides. Yes, Change Our Name by Emmanuel H, grade seven. Would you want to go to a school named after someone who changed your language, religion, and cut off all of your hair? Statement of the problem, our essential question, should we change the name of Juan Cresty Middle School? My answer, yes, we should change it because the Spanish forced natives to build the missions, took away their language and converted them all to Christianity. Background, Juan Cresty was the person who helped create the missions in California. He would write in a book and tell us what happened. He helped decide which native groups to convert and where to build the missions. The CA mission system was to enslave the natives and change them to, to Christianity. One impact was they were forced to change their hair, what they were, and basically their whole culture. Indians, Indians were housed in overcrowded, filthy conditions and forced to labor without pay on the missions, considerable ranches, and farms. Reason number one. One reason we should not keep our school name is natives were forced to build the missions. They made them build the missions without pay. They had to stay and were not allowed to leave. Reason number two. Another reason we should not keep our school language is took away the native's languages. In this video, we watched the native women say they converted a few pages of the Bible to the native language just to get them to want to won't read it and then instead made them Spanish. In the book, Irene was punished by being burned for sinking her native language. They were basically tortured. The final reason we should not keep our school name is they forced natives to be Christians. They kept them all the missions, but to stay there, they had become Christians. They were told they had to be baptized. They also sent some children to the Christian schools where they were forced and basically tortured the children to be Christian. Conclusion, thank you for your support. After reading these slides, I ask that you, my reader, to change the name of the school. Your support will have a positive impact because it will no longer be, have to name after someone who tortured or enslaved natives. Okay, next we have student presenter Angel, which is a seventh grader, slides read by me. The importance of a school identity. To keep our change, Juan Crispy school name. Hi, my name is Angel Oriana. I'm in seventh grade and this is my project. Hi. The naming of a school cause of passion and interest and is an opportunity for education. Naming schools after, after worthy people keeps their names alive for people who otherwise might never have heard of them. Next slide. Statement of the problem.
people to forget their beliefs in favor of the beliefs Juan Crispy name is too closely associated with missions in their troubled history. The, the name is not representative of our diversity. Background, Juan Crispy was a Spanish pres in a missionary under order from Juan Perro Sierra between 1769 and 1823. Franciscan missionaries built 21 missions in California from San Diego to San Francisco. This wall, this was the catalog church ways of converting the Native Americans to capitalism and take away their beliefs. The missions were built on the backs of Indian slaves who endured sickness and punishment. Their identities and lifestyle were taken away from them. Next slide. The California missions, oh, history.com. The California missions which stretched from San Diego to Sonom had a significant impact on the native Californians. The mission influenced culture, religion, our culture, our language, and econ economy in the region. But the missions also impact California Indian cultures in negative negativity ways. Europeans forced the natives to change their civilization to match the modern world. In the process, local traditions, cultures and customs were lost. Next. Reason number one. One reason we should not keep the name Juan Crispy is because of its association with violence and intolerance. Indians was forced to convert to catalogism, forcing someone to do something that is not right. In the US, this is this is illegal. Coronation is like being a bully. Next slide. Reason number two. Another reason we should not keep the name Juan Crispy is that it may be offensive to our Native American students. We have a culture of being inclusive no matter what race, religion, Next slide. Reason number three. The final reason we should not keep the name Juan Crispy is that his school name is more than just a sign above the door. It's an expression of what the school stands for. Do we, do we want to be known for violence and intolerance? Next slide. Conclusion. Stand up, speak out. Thank, for, thank you for your support. After reading these slides, I ask that you, my reader, share my slides with your family and friends and post one on your social media page. Raise awareness for tolerance and inclusion. Your support will have positive impact because we will be able to pick a school name that will represent all of us. Han Crispy was a Spanish Sorry, Anaya, um, you can do your introduction. We will now listen to seventh grader Eric Niren present his work. Han Crispy was a Spanish missionary. He belonged to California mission system to convert native Indian to Catholic or Christian. At the time, it was 
good that we have a system to spread the power of optimism. It brought many new culture and religious ideas to California nowadays. The California mission system get critics because it relate, relates to punishment of the native Indian of slavery. The school can keep the name Han Crespi because he helped curating the system to contribute to what it is now called State of California. We keep his name to honor his effort of building California. The California system recruit Native American, Native Indian to become Christian by teaching them many things such as black sniffing and weaving as well as farming and raiding animals raising animals the mission also taught native indian to build house ranching and construction unfortunately the mission appeared to treat Native American like slavery. Those that dislike the mission life to try to run away. I'm not 100 opposed to the changing name of Han Crispy. The school can change it if they feel like they, they need to do it. We are going to conclude with an anonymous testimony from a student whose family has experience in the missions. Alexia will read the questions and I will read the student's answers. You've mentioned before that your ancestors experienced life in missions and injured forced Christization. Tell us a bit about how that affected your family. My family wasn't affected so much like others, but it has a bit of an effect like not knowing what our religion used to be or not having things about our culture or anybody else culture, they don't really use other language, just only Spanish. 
How has your family experience in the missions affected you? For example, are you able to speak your family ancestral language? My family experience affected me in some ways because none of us know what our old religion was and I don't speak the language fluently and struggle to say things, but there were many things that caused that and also the missions too, because they only speak Spanish. Is, is there anything else you would like to share about your family experience? I feel like those missions caused a bit of why people my age don't really speak the language anymore. Like my mom noticed that kids my age use more Spanish and respond in Spanish. I know that there are other reasons why they use Spanish more, but these churches usually use Spanish and have little to nothing about their cultures. How does your family experience impact your, how does your family Juan Crespi and others. Juan Crespi and others did try to take away many cultures, languages that I don't want to represent him because of what he did. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Wow, I am really blown away. I was getting excited as we prepared for this. Um, I had preview, previewed a lot of the, or all of the, the presentations. I had spoken with our student presenters, but I am absolutely blown away, as I'm sure our many, many guests here are tonight. Um, I want to thank everybody who is here right now, um, watching our students and, and, and supporting them. Um, there's a very large uh, audience um, here, um, and it's just really been fantastic. Um, so impressed. Um, I do want to thank a few folks. I see in the in the attendees, there's lots of educators from around our district and from our school. Um, I want to thank board members uh, Smithfolds, Gonzalez, Hoy, and Reckler, who are all here right now. Very much appreciated. Uh, former board member Panis, thank you so much for being here. Um, our chief academic officer, Ruben Aurelio, is here. Um, our uh, uh, director of curriculum and instruction, Gabe Chilcott. Our SELPA director, Kristen Hardy, is here. Our director of positive school climate, Mashante Smith, is here. Our director of African American student achievement, William McGee, is here. Thank you all so much for being here. It really means a lot um, to our students and to our school. Um, I see uh, principals. Um, Anne Marie Marnakis is here. Principal Edith Jordan McCormick is here. Um, thank you so much. I, I, I want to read off the names of the, the Crespi educators that are here, but there's just so many. They're all so, uh, so many here. And I, I do want to get to our Q&A a bit. Um, so if there are any questions, the students did hang around. So if you have specific questions, uh, type them into the, the Q&A box. Um, if there's any questions for uh, specific students about their presentations, um, please also just shout outs. I'm looking at the, at the chat and seeing such wonderful things being said um, about and to our students. Um, I'm seeing someone says, can I talk a bit louder? Uh, can you guys hear me better now? Am I doing okay? Um, Bobby, do we have any... Um, do we have any questions right now that are coming in? I see a question here. What is one, to all the students, what is one thing that you learned during the project that really stuck out to you? So any student, any student who's here can answer that question. Um, anything that stuck out to you from what you learned? Um, I learned how he treated native people and took their language and culture away from them. Any other students, things that you learned that stuck out to you? Uh, 
I see we have a student in the chat who shared what they learned, which is awesome. Um, so Ahmad said that Juan Crespi basically enslaved Native Americans. If you're a student in the audience, please also feel free to share. Yeah. Absolutely. Catherine, you got a question in the q and It says, what names are being considered to replace Juan Crespi? Excellent question. Um, well, as a collective, we haven't gotten to that point of the conversation yet, but to the students that are here and to the students that are, that are attendees, go ahead and you can put things in the chat, but the students that are here as presenters, do you have thoughts or ideas about names um, that, that could be the name of our school going forward? Any, any students with ideas? Well, to the, to the community that are here, um, so far the conversation has really been about investigating Juan Crespi and about deciding if, if we feel that this is the name that we wanna go forward with our school. Um, and if, if it comes out from this uh, interrogation, if we make the decision to move on and if the school board makes the decision to move on from that name, there will be a, a process that's very public um, in which uh, ideas are shared for what the, the next name could be. I see Winston Churchill, I see Elsa Bronte Middle School. Smarty School University. <laughs> um, are there any other questions from, from, um, uh, from our uh, audience that would like to ask a question of our students. I see Dolores Huerta, I see Michelle Obama, I see Oprah Winfrey. Hey, Gathery, we've got a great question from Sue Khan. Yes. Uh, what is the name, why is the name of a school important? Excellent, excellent question. A um, couple of the students, I think, touched on this a bit in their presentations. Are there any students that would like to answer this question? Yeah, I will answer the question. A school name is important because it represents all the students that attend the school. And you don't want to go to a school that is named after a bad person. Great job, Alexia. I see another in the Q&A. Uh, what made you, to the students, what made you get involved in presenting tonight? Any of the students that presented tonight, would you like to talk about why you chose to, to um, put yourself out there? It's very courageous. I'm very proud of you all. And I'm seeing some of your elementary school educators. Ms. Marnakis is here, who was some of your principal when you were in elementary school. Um, that are super proud of you guys. So what, what was the reason why you decided to present tonight? Sorry, what was the question? What, why did you choose to present tonight? You, you guys are all here voluntarily. So what made you decide that you wanted to, to be here? I mean, like, it sounded like an opportunity to like tell the people why we should. Any other students that want to, to speak um, uh, to why they're here tonight? I see Dr. Breedlove, our fantastic, wonderful science and math uh, teacher at Juan Crespi Middle School, uh, said choose an Ohlone name since the school is on their former land. I think that's a wonderful idea as well. We have one more student who would like to answer why the name of the school is important. Um, Anaya, take it away. Uh, the name of the school is important because it shows that's the first thing you know or you see. Yeah. 
There's an interesting question in the chat. It's in the Q and A says, um, the name Juan Crespi, why was it chosen? Excellent question. Um, one that I do not actually have the answer to, unfortunately, that was um, uh, over 50 years ago when the school was, was named uh, Juan Crespi. Um, so I, I don't have that answer, I'm sorry. Guthrie, we've got another question coming in, this one through the chat from Kristen sure. Hardy. Uh, yes. How would your school community choose a new name? That is an excellent question as well. Um, I believe that there's board policy on this and, and steps that are to be taken um, to have an open uh, discourse. And that it is, um, once it is uh, proposed to the board, if it is approved, that there would be um, community meetings in which no nominations could be made, uh, a discussion around the, the steps to make those nominations and, and the, um, the uh, characteristics uh, of a person. Um, and I do know that there's board policy around um, what those characteristics are as far as who, what names would be chosen uh, if, it, if it is to be named after a person. Um, I did see in the chat, someone said also Bronte Middle School or there's other options to name a school that's not just after a person, um, but after an idea or, or, or what the school is about. So it would, it would be a process and I believe there's um, a certain number of public meetings that need to take place. Um, uh, in that process. And it the board policy, thank you, uh, Ms. Barton, expli explicitly states that students are included in that process. Gather there's another question in the, the uh, this one's in the Q&A uh, from Azalea Sanchez. Forgive me if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. If you were to choose another name, would it involve the California mission? It's an interesting question. Any students that would like to give your opinion on that, on whether or not a, another name would include or involve the California missions? I mean, but... Sorry. I was gonna say for students, um, I know it might be hard to find the questions. So if you check your chat, I've been posting them there. Um, I know a student asked earlier if they could be reminded of the question. So just a reminder for our student presenters, since you might be having trouble navigating where to find the questions, I'm putting them in the chat for you. And then to the student that I cut off, I am gonna be quiet, please take it away. Sorry. And no, not really, because I guess we pretty much made this whole argument of why we should change your name. Thank you, Aaliyah. Um, any other students that want to speak to that? I see in the chat from, from Trustee Smith Folds. Thank you for that. James Andrew Harris, who discovered periodic elements 104 and 105. He lived in our district, African American man, and his son still lives in Pinole. Fantastic. All right, are there any other questions from, from any of our um, wonderful guests here tonight? Well, again, I just, I wanna say thank you to everybody that are that is here. Um, and I, I've seen it in the chat. I know that I'm not alone in this. I, this is one of my proudest moments as an educator. Um, I, I see in the chat, a lot, of, a lot of our educators are saying how much they learned tonight. I learned a great deal tonight. This has been amazing. Um, the, the students, you young people are really, you know, the future of our school and our district is in really good hands. Thank you so much for, for everything that you did to prepare for tonight and for your presentations. Thank you to our guests. Um, this has been really, really profound for me. Um, I'm going to pass it back to our hosts for the evening to uh, take us out and end the night. Alexia and Anaya, the floor is yours to close us out. Um, can I have, oh, real quick, before we do that, can we have uh, the teachers to turn their cameras on one more time? Thank you all, thank you all, thank you all. You guys were fantastic. Um, again, 
to, to everybody that's what like many things we see the end product uh, what you don't see is the many many hours that our history teachers put in prepping for this they've been planning this since goodness what uh, September is when when the history department started working and planning for this project um, the, the, the finished project is fantastic the students did fantastic work and they were led to that place by our fantastic history department so again thank you so very much for the work that you put in um, not pictured on the screen right now are the the um paraprofessionals who worked with the students in preparing their work, the parents who helped the students. I uh, also want to thank Bobby Jordan for, for supporting us throughout this whole process. It's been fantastic. So um, again, uh, Alexia and Anaya, please turn on your cameras. I am going to turn mine off and mute myself. You guys can uh, close out the night for us. Thank you so much. OK, I just wanted to thank each and every one of y'all for joining because Without y'all, it would have been possible. And thank you for having me. Thank you for everybody being here. And it's just really nice. Thank you. Huge thanks again to our fantastic student presenters and hosts. Um, again, this was all volunteer. Um, we are so lucky to have so many speakers who wanted to participate. As our final raffle to thank you all for staying um, and listening to our students share their amazing ideas. Um, I will be picking two folks using a random number generator to um, win a hoodie. Additionally, the winners of our previous raffle were um, Kathy Swift and Miss Linda. If you are one of those two people, shoot me a email, my email's in the chat, in order to um, receive your lovely item. And then uh, give me two seconds for our final winners. We have our final winners are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Azalea Sanchez and um, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, Emil Brock Henriquez. So if I said your name, congratulations, you are one of our winners. Please shoot me, Miss Barton, an email. And then thank you again to our lovely hosts um, and fantastic presenters for being present tonight. Thank you all for your support. Good night, everyone. Hey, students, can everybody put their cameras back on so we can just, um, as, as everyone else is leaving, I just would like to be able to see everybody and, and thank you all again. And whoever's screen sharing, can we stop the screen share so we can all see each other? You guys, oh my goodness, I am like, I, you guys, I've been doing, I've been in education for 18 years. None of you were alive when I started doing this work. Um, and this is really one of the proudest moments I've ever had in my life as, a, as an educator. This, and I see Sue's, or Miss Schultz, sorry. <laughs> it's, you guys were so far beyond amazing. This was incredible, you guys. I'm like, I'm gonna go to sleep so happy tonight. I, I, somebody else talk because I'm going to start crying. You guys did so good. That was so, I'm so impressed. Thank you so much. I know I said it already when I was wrapping up, but beyond fantastic, especially we only had like a couple days to get us all ready and you came through, destroyed it. I'm not surprised. You're all amazing. Like, of course you killed it. And yet it was still so fantastic. I loved being here as an audience member. I'm like so sweaty because I was so excited listening to you all share. So fantastic work today.
I want to say thank you to everyone, uh, my student and Alexia, I know you were my student last year. I'm so proud of you. I know you always did good, but really, really, you were a great host today. And everybody, thank you, everyone. This was a very, very good show. Students, do you have anything? Oh, Sue, Michelle, sorry, I cut you out. I didn't know if you were about to speak as well. No, I'm good. I'm just proud of everybody. You guys all did such a great job. Um, I'm just, you know, but the question that that people asked was, you know, why did you guys decide to do that? And um, I am proud of you guys. I don't know that I would have done it as a kid. I definitely wouldn't have done it when I was a kid. I don't think so. I hands, hands, a round of applause, whatever. You guys did an awesome, awesome, awesome job. Hey, Guthrie, you want me to bring them up as panelists? Is that what you want me to do or just let them talk? Uh, I don't know. I'd see there's a bunch of folks that are still here and since the show is over, but there's folks here that are that are educators at the school that since we're done now, I don't know if you can make a panel, whatever it would, I guess panelists, so everybody can, you know, speak to the, actually turn on their cameras and say hi to the kids and, and I don't know. I just, I'm finding ways to not have this be over <laughs> is basically what's happening right now. Um, so to all of the Crespi teachers and, and other educators from around the district that are still here, um, if you can, you know, feel free to, to turn your cameras on and turn your, turn your mics on and if you have anything to say. Yes, I mean, you guys can go. Sorry. It is so, the, the night is done. We're done. Everybody that wants to go can go. But I just I wanted to give the teachers that are still here um, to, a chance to to say hi. Students, you did hi. great. I'm proud of all of you. Keep doing yeah, the good work. Uh, Alexa. Sylvia, Eric, all three of you were fantastic. I am so proud of you and, and what you guys are doing. I've always told you you were leaders and now you're proving it true. Good job, guys. Every one of you did a fantastic job. I, I enjoyed listening to you. That was so good, everyone. You all came in with such strong arguments and such like clear ideas. Great job. It was Wonderful. such an honor to listen to you. Yeah. Hey, Miss Loftus. Hi, Brian. It's so nice to see you. It's great to see eighth graders I haven't seen in months. <laughs> Brian, your letter was fantastic. You Thanks. Did a great job. Again, congratulations to everyone. I was just so proud listening and watching everybody you know speak their minds alexia i am just so proud of you You're like killing every question that they were asking yeah. you brian read so well anaya sylvia i don't know both of you but you did also an amazing job yeah. and of course this wouldn't be possible also without the hard work of miss man miss schultz miss barton mr fleischman and everybody else who's been here to actually support everybody so i am just so proud uh, for being one of the Crespi teachers. So um, I look forward to having one of, uh, you know, um, another grateful event next time, so. And you too, Miss Valencia, thank you. Bye, Amanda. All right, well, I think we are about wrapping up. Thank you all. I guess this is good night. Great work. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. See you all later. Sleep well. Bye. Great job, guys. Great, great job. Fantastic. Utterly fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> like, Thanks. Like, absolutely. Bye. Knocked it out of the park. You very smooth, like the Nicholas Brothers, my, my students. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have Miss Hatcher here. 
You still there? Oh no, I was just gonna say nice. <laughs> oh, the kids all left. Alexia still. Alexia, you still here? Nope. I, I mean, what could I say? Everybody already said they were super proud of the kids. So, you know, anytime, anytime kids take some agency in what's happening for them, that's a good yep. thing. Indeed. Good on you, Mr. Fleischman. I did very little on this. This was the teachers and the kids. I, I just I know, and yet you're just basking in it all. You're like glowing. <laughs> you have like a glow happening. Well, what, like, wouldn't you? Like, this was incredible. It Three. I'm, yes. Yeah, I okay. I'm, I'm, I'm acknowledging. I have like three pieces of, I got two computers open and I was like, I'm going to get on this on my phone because mm. one, I don't want to hear his mouth if I don't come. <laughs> and I really do want to hear what the kids have to say. So here I am. I haven't even had dinner yet. That's how committed I am. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right. Good night, everybody. Hey, Edith. Oh, huh? I think Edith walked uh, away from the computer. Oh, I'll call you later. All right, I'll talk to you. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.